It's great to have you all here, and especially Acts Ministries as well, and everyone from the family of love and faith. It's awesome to have you here. And uh, I just want to say to all of you also a blessed Christmas. And uh, just want to remind you, it's Christ Mass. So it's called a Christ celebration. It's all about Christ. It's all about Jesus. And that is what we do when we, when we have this service. It's all about celebrating Jesus Christ. And for that reason, I know we already worshipped and I know we already did all of those things. But I want us to just, this morning, once again, let's just forget about everything around us and everyone around us. And, you know, maybe your Sunday lunch that is waiting. And let's just for a moment, uh, your Christmas lunch, Christmas uh, celebrations, and let's just for a moment, let's just focus on Jesus. And I want us to sing a beautiful song. And uh, it's actually something that's a song that's close to my heart. It always touches me when I sing this song. And I believe it will do the same for you. And let's just get into this attitude of worshiping Jesus as we worship with this song. You were the word at the beginning One with God, the Lord most high Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Sin was great, your love was greater 
So I think that is what Christmas is all about. It's all about Jesus. Yeah. It's all about celebrating Him and what He did. And um, the title of the message that I want to share with you today is that there is no news like the good news. There's no news like the good news. You see, Jesus changes everything. And I want you this morning, I want us to listen to a scripture of how Jesus, how the birth of Jesus was announced. And I want to read it to us from Luke chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. And it says the following, it says, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So, I believe this morning that what the angel said is a message to us. Not only for Christmas, but also for 2021 and beyond. And I want us to read it again. Okay, so let's read it again. It says, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. So I want you to hear the words of the angel. He said, The first thing he said that, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Now, would you agree with me this morning that when we look at the natural, there are many things to be afraid of. The, the, coronas, the coronavirus pandemic, uh, companies downsizing, the economy falling apart, you know, wars, rumors of wars, all of these things going on around us. And with all these things happening around us, I think there's a lot of reasons that we could be afraid. But yet, the angel said, do not be afraid. So, but did you know that when you say to someone, when you say to them, do not be afraid, it doesn't make them, do not be afraid. Okay, when I say to someone, don't be afraid, they are still sometimes afraid. But it doesn't make us less afraid. But that's why the angel's message didn't stop there. The angel didn't just say, don't be afraid. Look at what he said. He said, behold. He said, behold, you see, whether we are afraid or not, has a lot to do with what we behold. So many times we fill our minds with junk, we fill our hearts with, you know, fear. You know, I don't know how many of you also get messages, but people pass on messages, WhatsApp messages with doom and gloom. And people, you know, are constantly watching televisions. The televisions are on 24-7. And they all they see is murder, death, and fear, and all the negative reports every day, everywhere. It's just doom and gloom all around them. And their hearts are failing because they, 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 they have so many reasons to fear. And I'm all for staying informed. You know, we should stay informed. You know, we shouldn't bury our head on the ground and say none of these things are happening. But for many people, they've become consumed by the bad news that, that is around them. They can't become consumed about, about, about with it. But the principle that I want to share with you is this. We become what we behold. We become what we behold. And you see, we are not to behold what the world beholds. We are to behold what the angel said. He said, behold, good tidings of great joy. Good tidings of great joy. You see, we should always remember, child of God, that, that we are, might be in the world, but we are not from the world. We might be in the world, but we are not from the world. And listen to what the angel also said to behold. He says, there is born for you this day in the city of Bethlehem a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And I think that the angel actually gave us some advice that not only to have a blessed Christmas, but to actually to have a blessed life. So I believe he said to us, don't look at what is happening around you. Don't behold the bad news, but behold the good news. The good news. And the good news is that a Savior has been born for you. 
A savior has been born for you. When you behold him, even in the midst of all the chaos, even in the midst of all the confusion, we can still have great joy. Great joy. So today I want to remind you of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news. And I want to remind you once again that there's no news as good as the good news. There's no news as good as the good news. And I trust that as you shift your focus this morning to your Savior Jesus Christ, away from the world, away from all of these things, as you shift your focus to your Savior Jesus Christ, that you will not just only this morning hear about the salvation, but that you will experience His salvation. That you will experience His anointing that removes the burdens and destroys the yokes in your life. So let's look this morning at our beautiful, wonderful Savior Jesus Christ, our Lord. So once again, the angel said, he said that the Savior is born. Now, I want to show you something quickly. And this is from the name of Jesus. Now, I don't know how many of you know what the name of Jesus is in Hebrew, but it is Yeshua. Yeshua. Now, you know, don't feel guilty if you don't pray to Yeshua Jesus. You know, I want to just say this, you know, for the sake of so many times people will say to you, listen, you have to use Jesus' as Hebrew, Hebrew name. Okay, but actually in heaven, they don't speak Hebrew. Okay, actually 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 said, even if I speak the tongue of angels, okay, um, so what is, what is that saying to you? In heaven there is a tongue of angels. Angels speak a language. Okay, the Bible also said in the book of Revelation, it says that, that, uh, that in, in the end time there's going to be a, a, a group of people from every tribe, every nation, and every tongue that is going to stand before God and worship Him. Okay, so if God talks about every tongue, then I think we can also talk every tongue and God can still understand. So if we say Jesus or if we say Yeshua, you know, God still hears you. Amen. Okay, but I want us to just look at Yeshua because Yeshua is, 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 is Hebrew and Hebrew is such a deep, rich language. And I just want to share something with you from his name that I thought was quite amazing. So, you can put up a picture on the slide and you'll just see that when you see that, that is the name of Yeshua. It's actually different letters. Now, Hebrew is written from left to right. So, you see that the name of Jesus, it is Yud Shem Vav Ahim. Okay, those are the letters that represent Jesus' name in Hebrew. Now, what is amazing about the Hebrew, Hebrew language is that every letter also represents a picture. Okay, every letter represents a picture. Now, when you look at that picture, you see the first thing that I want to see that the yud is actually is the picture of a hand. Okay, the shin is actually it looks like a little print, but it actually looks to me like a man with his hands held up. Okay, then the so I think it's a picture of a cross. Vav is the picture of a nail. And Ayin is the picture of an eye. So all these letters represent these things, but it also represents those pictures. Now, when you put that all together, it actually means, Yeshua means, hand on the cross with nail C. Hand on the cross with nail C. Isn't that amazing? Even in the name of Jesus, you can actually see that Jesus was born to be crucified. He was born to die for our sins. So, isn't it amazing that Jesus was born to save us? He was born to save us. And for most people, some of the salvation is just something that happens on Sundays. You know, people come to church, we have a salvation service, people get born again. And, uh, you know, that's what salvation is for most people. They get saved, but it's all about just going to heaven. You know, not going to hell, but going to heaven. And while that is good, you know, it's good to go to heaven and we, that we know that we have salvation and that we are going to heaven. It's not the full meaning of salvation. It's not the full meaning of salvation. You see, salvation, according to Easton's Bible Dictionary, actually said that salvation is redemption made effectual to the individual by the power 
of the Holy Spirit. Salvation is redemption that is made effectual in the, in the, to the individual by the power of the Holy Spirit. So what that is saying is that salvation is when we experience the power of God's redemption. It's when you experience it. You see, it's one thing to hear of a Savior. It's another thing to experience salvation. <coughs> you see, unless you have experienced salvation, you know, you haven't really encountered what a Savior is. So what is salvation? Salvation is the Greek word soteria. Soteria. So now you've got Hebrew and you've got Greek. And uh, soteria actually just means the following. It means welfare. It means prosperity. It means deliverance. It means preservation. It means salvation and safety. So what I'm trying to say to you is that salvation is not just going to heaven. But salvation is a realistic experience where God prospers you, where God delivers you, where God preserves you and He gives you peace, shalom. And that which shalom is nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Amen. So, what I want to say to you, when we talk about salvation, we're not just talking about going to heaven. We are talking about that God wants to give you everlasting life. And He wants you to experience that everlasting, not someday in heaven, but He wants you to experience that salvation now. He wants you to experience that everlasting life now. So let's look at everlasting life. What is everlasting life? You see, the, thank you. the real message of the gospel of Jesus Christ of salvation is that God wants to give you this everlasting life. So, on the night before Jesus' crucifixion, he said the following. He actually prayed this prayer from John 17 verse 3. He said, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you said. So, Jesus actually said to us that salvation or everlasting life is knowing the Father. That is what, what salvation is. That is what everlasting life is. It is knowing the Father, the only true God, and also knowing Jesus Christ, whom He has sent. You see, that is what everlasting life is. You see, a lot of people think that everlasting life is just about living forever. But I have news for you this morning. It's actually a misconception because everybody is going to live forever. You see, when a person dies, they do not cease to exist. They, the spirit and the soul, actually, of every person who, who dies goes back to God. The body is the, the part that stays behind in the case of the grave. But the truth is that every person who has ever lived on the face of the earth will continue to live in spirit form. So to say that eternal life is just living forever is not the whole truth because everybody is going to live forever. And this verse makes it very clear that the eternal life that God talks about is not given to everyone. It is not given to everyone. You know, some, some people would say eternal life is living forever in heaven versus living forever in hell. Okay, and that is partly true. But eternal life is really what Jesus said. Jesus said eternal life is to know God and Jesus Christ. That is what true salvation and true eternal life is. You see, and this knowing is more than just intellectual knowledge. You know, a lot of people can talk about this. They can talk about, you know, eternal life. They can talk about, you know, uh, knowing Jesus. But it is more than intellectual knowledge. This word know is actually a word that is used throughout Scripture. And it is one of the most personal, intimate words that you can ever think of. You see, the real purpose for salvation is not living forever, as great as that will be. The real purpose of salvation is to have intimacy and a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. There are many people who have cried out to God for forgiveness for their sins, but they never had intimacy as a goal for their relationship with God. They want to talk about going to heaven, but they never focus on having an intimate relationship with God. By not explaining the real purpose of salvation, we are actually doing the gospel at this service. 
When we present salvation as eternity, we are not really helping people. There are some people who are currently living in such a literal hell right now on earth that they, they can't even think of living eternal life. There are some people uh, who are living depressed. They are living in, in poverty. They are constantly dealing with strife. They are living in rejection. They are living in hope. They have failed mar marriages. And people are just trying to survive day by day. They are just trying to survive, keeping their heads above water. By making salvation something that deals only with eternity, we are, we are actually not helping people understand that God wants you to live this eternal life right now. God wants to change your marriage. God wants to change your finances. God wants to transform your life all through a living relationship with Him. The truth is, Jesus not only came to affect our eternal destinies so that we can live forever, but He also came and He became our punishment and He took our curse so that He can deliver us, as the Bible says, from this prison evil world. Amen. God wants to deliver you from this prison evil world and He doesn't do it by taking you away. He does it by, by keeping you here and you being the difference that you want to see in the world. Galatians 1 verse 4 says, Who gave Himself for our sins that He might deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of God our Father. You see, Jesus came to give you intimacy and a personal relationship with God the Father today. Jesus came to bring you back into a close personal relationship with Him. Jesus loves you and Jesus wants you to know Him personally. Jesus wants to give you a quality of life that is greater than anything that you've ever known and obtained, that you can obtain through any other source. There's no other real life except in Jesus. He wants you to know this morning, like I said, that there is no news as the good news. Amen. He said in John 10 verse 10, one of my favorite my life scripture, he said that the thief, which is Satan, came not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But he came so that you can have life and have it in abundance. The Amplified says, in abundance to the full until it overflows. Amen. You see, God wants to give you eternal life. He wants to give you abundant life. And I believe that you need that today. That was a good place to say amen. 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 That is God. Christ died not only to forgive your sins, but to bring you close to Him. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus, you need to know Him, not just for a get out of jail free God, but you need to know Him for that purpose of an intimate, personal relationship with Him. If you've already been born again, we need to go beyond just our sins being forgiven. And we need to enter into a living relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, it is time that we know what salvation is. But that we also know who salvation is. It is time to live in the good news of Jesus Christ. And you see, the truth is, God wants you to reign in life. Say to the person next to you, God wants me to reign in life. God wants me to reign in life. You see, through salvation, we are destined to reign in life. It's your destiny. We are called by the Lord to be successful, to, to, live, to enjoy life, to enjoy a life of victory. God's will is not that you live in defeat and poverty and in failure. God has called you to be the head and not the tail. God wants you to be successful because Jesus Christ, our Lord, actually came and He paid the price for that. You see, most Christians, once again, are just happy to, to go to heaven. But Jesus died for so much more. For so much more. And don't misunderstand me. Salvation is the most important thing that can happen to you. But don't just live for eternity. Live in the blessing of God. Live in the life of God now. He didn't just save you from hell and purchase your redemption, but He came so that you can reign in life. And when you reign over life, you reign over sickness, you reign over the power of darkness, you reign over depression, you reign over poverty, you reign over sickness and disease, and you reign over every one of Satan's devices that is trying to destroy you. The Bible tells us in Ephesians,
Ephesians 1 verse 7 it says in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin in him you have redemption what is redemption Galatians 3 verse 13 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us verse 14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ and verse 29 says and if you be Christ then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. You see, these verses tell us that Christ has redeemed us from the curse. The Bible tells us that the curse was the punishment for breaking the law. And that punishment was poverty, sickness, spending eternity without God. But the blessing of God came and He changed all of those things. And according to 3 John 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. And be in health even as your soul prospers. You see, God comes and He takes your whole life and He prospers you. Your spirit, your soul and your body. And He changes everything in your life. You see, too many people have the impression that these promises were just for people in the Bible. Listen, these promises are for you. These promises, Jesus paid with His blood. He paid with His life. He came, He was born to save you from all these things so that you can live this life. And Galatians 3.29 says, And if you are Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So the promise is yours. So once again, say to the person next to you, the promise is mine. The promise is mine. The promise is yours. And I want to show you how this promise works. In the Bible, there's a good example of it. When God delivered the people out of Egypt, Psalm 1537 says, out of the New Living Translation, says that the Lord brought the people out of Egypt, loaded with silver and gold, and not one among the tribes of Israel even stumbled. If that was what God did in the Old Covenant, can you imagine what He can do for us under the New Covenant? The good news of the good news is that God created everything and He and he came and he gave his life and he was born to save you from all these things so that you can live this life. Romans 5 17 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, so much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by the one Jesus Christ. It's time to reign in life. Through salvation, through the power of salvation, it is time to reign in life. And once again, there's no news like the good news. And the good news of salvation has been given to us so that we can live our lives in dominion. We are to reign. We are to dominate and not be dominated. Circumstances are not to dominate us. We are to dominate circumstances. Poverty is not to rule and reign over us. We are to rule and reign over poverty. Disease and sickness are not to rule and reign over us. We are to rule and reign over sickness. We are to reign in life as kings in life by Jesus Christ in whom we have our redemption. By Jesus who saved us, we have redemption through His blood and we have been saved. So this morning, I want to end once again with the message of the angel. Luke 2 verse 10 to 11. Then the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, for I behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This message really was good tidings. It should bring you great joy this morning. Know today that your Savior was born. He brought you soteria. He brought you welfare. He brought you prosperity, deliverance, preservation, salvation, safety. And when you are born again, He gives you this redemption. You are redeemed from spending eternity without God to an intimate, close and personal relationship with, with your everlasting Abba Father, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ, whom He has sent. You are redeemed from sickness to health. You are redeemed from poverty to abundant supply, from depression to the joy of the Lord. And from this day forward, you shall reign as a king in life because of the gift of righteousness and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I want to end with this this morning. It is time to partake of your full salvation. 
It is today that we celebrate that there was born for us a Savior in the city of David, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord. So believe this morning that there's no better news. There's no news as good as the good news. But the question this morning is, will you receive the good news today? Let's just close our eyes and pray. Father God, we want to come today and on this day, Christmas, which is a Christ celebration. We want to remember Jesus. We want to remember what He did for us on the cross of Calvary. We want to remember the life that He was born to live, but also the life that He died for us. And Lord Jesus, thank You that You came, because without You, we would have had nothing. Lord, without You, we would not have salvation. And we are so thankful, because without You, we would have never been able to make it. So this morning, I just want to just make an invitation. If there's anyone in this place, and I just want everybody to just close your eyes. Don't look around. Now. This is a moment between you and God. If there's anyone that is in this place this morning that do not have this personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, I just want you to just there where you are. When no one is looking around, I just want you to just put up your hand. Just there where you are. If that is you, if you do not have a personal, close, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, just put up your hand. Thank you. I see that hand. Going to give opportunities to anyone else. God wants to have a relationship with you. He came on this day to say that to you. So if that is you, just quickly put up your hand wherever you are. And we are just going to pray together the prayer of salvation. So let's just close our eyes and pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning just as I am. And I invite you into my heart into my life forgive my sins thank you for paying the price for salvation and for saving me I call upon your name right now thank you for saving me thank you for delivering me for prospering me for transforming my life I renounce sin, renounce sin and I live for you and I thank you for saving me right now and I give you all the praise, honor and glory in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much Pastor Hannes. That is awesome. It's a powerful message. And I want to ask you to take this message and put it in your heart. Let the Holy Spirit bring it into your heart in revelation on it and let us live this because it's powerful. Yeah. And I just want to say that uh, I will ask Pastor Hannes to send the link of this message to me and I will send it to Pastor Jenny so that you can, uh, if you want to uh, look at it again on uh, YouTube, you are welcome to do so. And then uh, I waited for this opportunity just to announce that uh, the reason why Pastor Jenny is not here this morning is because she hurt her back. So she's in bed with a lot of pain and we are praying for her yes. and I want everybody just to pray for her. Uh, this inflammation and you know the doctor is treating her for that as well. So let us just bow our heads and let's specifically pray for her this morning. Our Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come to you this morning as your children. We come to you with thankful hearts, Father God, because you are our source and you are the one who died so that we can live as we just heard, Father God. And we are standing in this living, loving relationship with you. It's all about the relationship. Yeah. Thank you, Father God. And today, as a family, Father God, we bring Pastor Jenny before you. And we ask, Father God, that you will touch her right now. We come against pain, sickness, disease. We bind you in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. You are not welcome in the body. You are the enemy. And the blood of Jesus is against you. And by the stripes of 
Jesus gave me, you are healed. And we lose the power of God's healing in and over her. God's wholeness in and over her spirit, soul, and body. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over her. And we thank you, Father God, for her and what she is doing in our lives. Thank you. We know a heart, Holy Father. We know that you are with her and that you will touch her and heal her. And we pray this in the almighty name of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in the honor of God. Amen. Amen. Let's go and enjoy this day, and remember it's all about Christ. May God bless you, and uh, we will see one another again. Thank you so much.